kind of stupidly on my part, <laughs> knowing Igwe's personality, uh, I was about to perform. So I said to him, hey, I'm, I'm about to perform downstairs in like two minutes. You should come check it out, right? And Igwe just laughed at me, like as if I'm going to watch you play the guitar. I'm Igwe Malmsteen. <laughs> Hello everybody, from Frets and Fingers, I'm Alex Pickhart and you're watching The Jam Sesh. Today we are joined by none other than Canadian guitarist and content creator Jamie Robinson, renowned for his exceptional talent on the strings and his ability to craft high quality, informative content. Jamie's success as a content creator comes as no surprise. From his captivating videos, like when you hire a metal guitarist for your jazz gig, to his insightful tutorials, Jamie's ability to blend skillful playing with engaging storytelling sets him apart in this digital realm. Prepare for a conversation packed with behind-the-scenes insights into content creation and the ingenuity that propels Jamie's content to the forefront of online guitar culture. Without further ado, let's welcome the man with the well-kept beard, Jamie Robinson. <laughs> welcome to the Jam Sesh. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can top that intro. I think that's like the peak right there. It's just like, <laughs> that's a, you've go. set the bar quite high here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so I guess before we get into this, do you want to just introduce yourself to the channel for anyone who might not know who you are? Yeah, my name is Jamie. I'm, uh, as you said, a content creator from uh, you know Toronto, Canada. Been doing it now for just over two years, but obviously been playing guitar my whole life, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been challenging. It's been you know a lot of work and everything, but it's uh, I'm I'm happy to talk about it because it's a really exciting kind of a uh, way of showcasing guitar, celebrating guitar and kind of, uh, you know, getting your stuff out there in a new digital world nowadays. Right. hundred percent. And yeah, for anyone who hasn't watched uh, his content, go see it. Like he's absolute like killer on the guitar, but uh, yeah, so I guess you were, I appreciate that. So you were a guitar teacher, I'm assuming prior to making your content. Yeah. 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 And then how I've been, I, I started playing guitar when I was, like you know seven or eight years old or something like that and uh i actually got my first teaching job at a music studio when i was 15 and that probably shouldn't have even happened at that age like it was you know pretty young like leave i think it was like grade 10 or something like that and take the bus over and teach guitar after school or something like that so i've been teaching guitar for for so many years now um but I've, I've been doing the content stuff for only the last two and a bit yeah right okay and i guess that's a like what inspired you to start content creation uh yeah two things so um i was teaching guitar uh you know for for a living uh, five days a week and then um when the pandemic happened uh it it really it really had a big impact in the guitar community in many ways. I've had so many students or subscribers or people reach out to me saying that they've either picked up the guitar in the pandemic or have picked it up again later in their life because of the pandemic. So it, it, in a way it was a real like boom for the guitar. And what was funny was a student uh, who I was teaching in person was, uh, you know, privy to TikTok, and I wasn't, I wasn't on that platform at all. And he said, you know, you should, you should post some guitar videos on TikTok, like, you know, you'd probably do pretty well. And I was, I honestly naively thought, well, how many guitar players would be on TikTok? Like, I, it was just so, <laughs> so naive to it. And then when the pandemic started, I, you know, I thought, well, maybe it's a new way because my, my teaching schedule kind of dried up in person because of the lockdown, of course, right? So it was funny. I kind of thought that, you know, if I can get a couple online students of my own, um, that would be great. And so maybe post some stuff to TikTok and stuff to see if I can get some students. And then one of the videos went pretty viral and uh, it, it has just like compounded and exploded from there. And the few students I was hoping for has quickly turned into more than I can handle and I'm now doing it all independently and it's just like continued to grow in a, in a really great way but uh, way more than I ever thought it would yeah right 100% yeah like on TikTok sometimes like if your video goes goes off man like the amount of followers you can get from a single TikTok video is ridiculous nuts. it's nuts yeah. 
Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. And I, yeah, you have like for the audience who doesn't know, like you have like a substantial amount of subscribers on YouTube as well, actually. Um, yeah, for me, YouTube has been harder to uh, build or scale. Like, uh, and I, I honestly think it's just like a difference of algorithms and stuff like that. Because uh, to give you an example, it's kind of interesting. This week on Monday, so two days ago, I posted a uh, short, right? Like a fun, uh, plain short. Two days ago on YouTube shorts, it's sitting at about 15 or 16,000 views, right? On TikTok, right before our meeting, it just passed a million views. Oh, wow. So, and, and what's funny is on TikTok, I only have maybe 20, 25% more followers so it's like it's fairly close but it just shows the difference like it if something really takes off on that platform it takes off and it's just like in in a day you get half a million views or something like that it's or more right it's wild right and that's good that your your videos are consistently getting quite a few views i was i was going through your tiktok and i saw yeah you're still pu you're pulling like solid numbers like for every post and even on youtube i'm i'm quite impressed with like the amount of views you get like it's you know it's thank a lot, you a lot and, and i think youtube i was talking to this guy named uh, marcel he's like lessons with marcel on youtube i don't know if you've heard of him he's a I, I, yeah i i know yeah. the the name yeah 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 so uh, honestly i think that's the video i sent you to uh give you like like a an example of what the interviews look like but um yeah so he was saying that like youtube um subscribers are a lot more like not valuable like to put them in like a sense of like a money figure but they're more they're harder to get but like once you have them like if you need them if you're like oh you know like go go check out my my website you know or my patreon there's a better chance someone on youtube is going to click your patreon page than someone on tiktok that's i agree with that into. yeah you do eh? i think okay. that's yeah i think that's true it's it yeah it's and it would be interesting to kind of look at why that is but it's on on youtube it's almost like it's almost like a slight investment into you if they're subscribing to you like that they, they really want to be a part of the journey and the ride and everything and on on TikTok, it's just so immediate all the time right so it's just like you know you can uh, follow or like and then 12 seconds later you've forgotten that you even saw that video <laughs> it's just so much to take in <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's because the follow button on TikTok is like literally, like you said, it's right there. Like, follow. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes when I post some videos, I feel like so recently I've had it, I went down like 0.1. So whatever, I'm like 100 and something thousand. Anyways, I went down 0.1. So a couple, it must have been 100 sub followers. And I was like, so maybe it's like the content I'm posting now. I'm like, oh, maybe people aren't liking it. So they're starting to be like, well, who's this guy? Like, let me unfollow this guy right quick. <laughs> <laughs> that that happens on uh, on all platforms and it's always a big challenge because i i've, I've kind of uh made that distinction myself recently where it's like I, I need to be happy and and enjoy the content that i put out and every video you can't expect it to be everyone else's favorite if that makes sense like if i can if i put out like a lesson video then some people might get a lot of value from that and then if the next one's just a funny skit, then they may, I don't know, they may not think it's funny or they just might not be into it or something like that or, or vice versa, right? So it's just like, you, you will find, for everyone, you'll find your audience who does like what you do. And, and I think it's a big mistake to try to appeal to everybody, if that makes sense, right? Right, 100%. I think for you, like even when you put, you made your own like style of skit with the, like I mentioned in your intro, like those really took off, right? Like that's the first yeah. time I was introduced to you was through those. And then I, I remember seeing the one and then I was getting like, I was fed all the other ones, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's funny with those. I like the one you're mentioning the, when you hire a rock guitar player or metal guitar player for a jazz gig. Um, I never intended that to be a series, but if you go to any of those posts, it's just, the whole comment section is like, please make more of these, please make more of these. Like, uh, and, and if I get, you know, really, nice comments where people are like that someone said the only reason i have tiktok downloaded is for this series <laughs> i'm like well i i can't not make more of it now <laughs> right 100%. Like, <laughs> and, and then, then just to, try to find funny uh 
songs or solos that would work in that series. Right. Um, and I saw you posted the uh, DJ Khaled. Uh, I thought that was so funny. Like the uh, <laughs> what he thought it would sound like. Oh my god! Because I remember seeing that original video a while back and just being like, "Man, is this this guy's getting like a, such a nice guitar?" You know what I mean? Like, not that I was hated. Like, you know what? Good for him. Good for him for building out his platform to the point where you know music companies are just sending him all this stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, oh man, like you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. The, the thing that I found hilarious in that video is how confidently he's strumming that guitar. There's no humor in it for him. Of There's no I, irony, sarcasm. It's like, I am legit playing this guitar right now, right? Right. And then, of course, I think, you know, because he has, he's DJ and he has, like, you know, production... Uh, experience and stuff what i noticed was even though he wasn't doing anything with his fretting hand his his right hand was actually keeping a steady beat it was keeping a steady rhythm so i was like you know it'd be funny is to put these like jazz chords and like you know beautiful almost like neo soul type progression just and and i literally just recorded it while watching his hand to just make sure i'm strumming it the exact same way um and a funny thing with that video was I made that like really late at night. Uh, one night it was like before going to bed, I just had that idea and I was, it doesn't take too long to do that. So I, I, I made that, I made the riff and then posted it and, uh, and then went to bed and I woke up and on TikTok it had over a million views overnight. Right. And now it's like seven or 8 million or something crazy like that. Um, but I did not expect it to, uh, appeal to that many people and the thing I definitely did not expect with that is how many people argue in the comments whether it's real or not <laughs> and <laughs> I was not expecting that at all right so I just thought that was kind of funny where it's like um, it's so clearly not happening over here that it's like right yeah <laughs> yeah it's just like the harmonics and then uh that was it was pretty funny, and then I guess people people actually liked the riff you you wrote so much they ended up making a uh, little like a tutorial of how to play it right. So, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's you know, it's so a good way to kind of like get more out of your content if that makes sense, or like leverage it where it's like uh, if it is a popular riff, then do a tutorial or something like that, and that video will probably do well because people want to figure it out or learn what you're doing or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's it's. You know those those kind of fun creative ways of uh, getting even more out of one idea, if that makes sense. Hundred percent. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, not to like change subjects, but do you? Uh, I was just kind of looping back. So you said you're full time. Like, so you still teach like online lessons right now, pretty frequently. Yeah. Yeah. So I in the, in this month I've actually had to scale it back because it's just become too much. Not the teaching itself, but the teaching in addition to YouTube and Patreon and everything else. Um, I got a, I got a message on Patreon the other day saying, um, I'm sure you're, you know, very busy with YouTube and Patreon, but is there any chance you do like online lessons? And I'm like, I teach like 50 students a week. Like it's, <laughs> okay. believe it or not, it's like, that's, that's the full-time gig. And then, I try to find the time to do all of this on top of it. So recently I've scaled it back uh, just by cutting a day so that I have like a little bit more breathing room with everything. But I, I'm still, a, I'm probably 40 to, yeah, about 40 students, 45 students a week right now. Wow. Um, so it's still, it's still a lot, but I, I love teaching. I genuinely love it. And I'm very, very fortunate because of, the online platforms that now I have students from all over the world. And it's like so fascinating to me of, you know, where everyone's from. And uh, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, it's uh, uh, yeah, it, I just, I always find it kind of fascinating that, you know, from one hour to the next, it's like different continents and different like time zones. And, but then every you know, that's the great thing with guitar, though, is it's like that's what's bringing everyone together. It's funny. Everyone always has, like, the same things they want to work on, the same questions, the same influences, the same, like, you know, it's like whether 
you know, what country, what country you live in or what language you speak or anything like that. It's like, uh, when it comes to guitar, it's like, it's very uniting that way. If that makes sense. Right. A hundred percent. Um, I guess, yeah. Would you take on students that have like from a different, that uh, speak a different language or I guess that's kind well, of, well, I've kind been, of, kind of difficult. yeah, I've been lucky that everyone, you know, I, I've had some students where like maybe English isn't their first language, but they definitely speak it like well enough to communicate with me. But, um, but I've had students in like the Middle East and in in Europe and Italy and uh, uh, yeah, it's just like all over the place. I have a student, uh, you know, Mexico and all across the states. Of course, states are obviously uh, probably the most popular area. Um, but I had one student from Saudi Arabia, uh, which I just I, I thought that was wild. For it's like yeah, that's really cool. Oh, cool! Yeah. yeah. Jeez, if eh? you told me that five uh, years ago, I would have never thought <laughs> that would have happened. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's kind of all started from some kid in your uh, music <laughs> exactly. class telling, hey, you should upload some stuff to TikTok, you know? I need to um, I need to find him because he hasn't been a student for a while and, like, you know, send, uh, send him a big thank you because... <laughs> maybe he's seen you and he's telling his friends, oh, it's my, like, I'm the reason he's, you know, making content. You know? I hope he knows that, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. deserves it for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, talk about content. So how do you go about like building out your, like a video for your channel? Like, do, are you writing scripts and like, how long did like, let's say the one where you did like Sultans of, I forget what it's called. Sultans of rock or shred. Uh, Sultan, Sultans of shred. Like how long does it take you to like build out the solos for that and then kind of lay them all down together. And sometimes I feel like I've seen some of your videos where it's like, it seems like it's one take, like obviously maybe it's taken a couple mm -hmm. of takes, but you're, you're managed to like bust out this ridiculous like solo and, one shot anyways um yeah so uh since i've uh, uh, i, I want to preface this by saying since i've been playing professionally for so many years uh, as a professional musician you do build up um a skill set a required skill set to be a professional musician where you're expected to learn music quick memorize it quick have it ready to prepare quick you know that's that's one of the big things that sets apart a professional musician from an amateur musician is you know what might what might take someone three months to work on you have like a couple days if that you know what i mean so it's like um so to answer your question a lot of the covers that i post a lot of them i'm actually it's just it's just a personal challenge to keep me motivated and to keep me practicing stuff but a lot of them i actually have like i try to learn in them that day right so um uh, most of them the i did uh uh what was the one that did pretty well um by pantera domination yeah and but because someone requested that right so i was like i'm gonna take a stab at it today and then like i think i'm yeah f fairly certain i filmed that like that day right so songs of shred that one i um it was like a day or two that i put that together and then one night, funny thing with that one is the one night I, I filmed a bunch of takes because I did want to do it as one take of all the different guitar players. So it's not edited and cut up and stuff like that. Um, and so I filmed a bunch of takes. The funny thing was I actually left that night, like going to bed thinking like I didn't get a really good take in there. And then the next day I came back and, and watched some of the back. And that one that I posted, I was like, oh, okay, that's actually like pretty good. Like that's, you know, maybe not as bad as I thought it was in the moment. Right. And right. I personally like sharing that with students just because it's important for everyone to know that everyone thinks that way. Everyone is like their own worst critic where it's like, you know, like you could basically point out any video of mine and I could like point out the mistakes to you or the things that I wish I did better or the things that, you know, like, but then you know, people watch stuff online. They're like, Oh my God, it's like flawless. It's perfect. And it's like, it's a different perspective. So, you know, every, everyone always beats up themselves on the guitar. Right. And then thinks everyone else is like the perfect musician. That's not, that's not right. the way it goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's kind of impressive. I think I was watching is a, a correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a quite a recent video you posted about it was there, there's some channel that has all these backing tracks. And you kind of just mm -hmm. flowed your own, you only kind of ripped your own solo. 
And I was yep. watching it, I'm like, okay, so this guy's just got like mad chops because like <laughs> whatever your improvisation, I saw a lot of techniques in there that you've clearly you've got down packed and you're mentioning that that comes from the years of uh, being a professional musician and that expectation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, um, yeah, clearly there's like uh, the amount of hours spent practicing the guitar in my lifetime is uh t to a point that i would never encourage it to anyone else <laughs> that's honest <laughs> i remember i would have uh young students or like fairly new students go like how much did you used to practice when you were young and i would just lie because i didn't want to discourage them you know just like not lies and like this took less time but lies and like you don't need to do what i did like don't if i tell you 10 hours a day don't quit guitar because <laughs> you think you right. need to do 10 hours a day. <laughs> right. It was just something you, you were passionate about. So you were just doing kind of thing. And... It, it was definitely that, but it's also when I was younger, every interview I ever read of my favorite guitar players, whether it's Steve Vai, Big Big Malmsteen, Slash, Eddie, all these guys, they all said the exact same thing, which is they just played guitar all day long, every day, and they just played for hours and hours. I remember Slash saying he wouldn't go to bed until he was able to get something down, and that means he wouldn't sleep till the next day or whatever. And Igve would play, you know, uh, over 10 hours a day, and Vi had a 10 hour a day workout that he put together and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, well, if these guys, if everyone's saying that, then there has to be something to it. And so, Luckily, since I started when I was young, when I was a teenager, I had more free time and I would devote almost uh, every minute outside of school to playing the guitar um, and uh, and just try to, you know, really fast track the progress that way, if that makes sense. So that 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 time has definitely been put in when I was younger. Right. Of course, yeah, and the people are like, oh, he's so talented. It's like, no, nah, well, it's, it's hard work, actually. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like talent. I feel like talent takes away from like the word. I, I was saying that to yeah, to, uh, listen with Mar the guy Marcel. I was like, when someone says you're talented, it just kind of takes away from the fact you're, of all. You're talents. so lucky you're talented. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what happened there. Yeah, um, I remember during COVID, I had kind of you know I've been playing. I started playing in 2008, so whatever, math, 16 years. Um, and I, you know, isn't, I was isn't that wild to think that that's 16 years ago? Yeah, that seems like a long <laughs> time ago. But I don't think I really took it seriously um, until I would say it's actually funny you mentioned a lot of people started in COVID. You know, in COVID, I had a lot more time to to practice. Mm -hmm. So I think 2017, 2018, I was playing a lot, like every day, because I was um, I was in Asia and I was actually playing like gigs. Um, a little bit here and there and then cool yeah that was that was honestly that was probably like the first my first introduction into playing like every day um, nice. having yeah. to play play a lot um that was also something that you know people didn't speak english but we were able to play you know guitar and music together which is fantastic yep. like we were talking about before <laughs> anyways to roll back to go to what i was saying yeah so in 2020 probably 2022 i spent like so much time playing acoustic um i was trying to learn a bunch of songs by Lindsay buckingham and nice. uh, yeah. just spent like hours and hours playing. Anyways, so, but now I you know the last probably year and a half I've been busy with, you know, work and other things are getting in the way, you know, like life. And uh, so I'm trying to still <laughs> yeah. try to find time to that play. stuff. But, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Um, but yeah, so I'm still trying to find time here and there, but that, you know, it's unfortunate I can't practice as much as I want, but, uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And, so. That's I hear that from every single student, and uh, it, it's always just about like trying to. It, it, and now it's the same problem for me. I, I've been telling students uh, recently. You would be surprised how difficult it is for me now to find time with the guitar just for myself, just to sit and play the guitar and and not be working on a video or not be like you know uh, almost distracted with like. Uh, you know, some other reason to sit with the guitar other than to just play and to work on stuff or to, you know, push past the plateau or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, everything I do professionally is guitar related, but it's actually pretty challenging to uh, just sit with the guitar and unfortunately get caught up 
editing a video or putting something together and you realize I haven't played the guitar in like three days. And it's like, you know, and then you go back to it, you're rusty. You have to like fight your way through everything. And that's a terrible feeling. And it's like, uh, you know, and obviously if, if I'm feeling rusty, then like everything else <laughs> suffers. Right. And it's yeah. like, you're not putting out a Sultan's of shred if you're rusty. <laughs> right. 100%. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and like, so for you, like, uh, when you were starting your social media, the first, you said, I watched a video, you said you took seven months to get monetized on YouTube. Um, I, I think that's yes. correct. Yeah. yeah seven months. Yeah. So like, how did you go about that? Was it like, were you posting consistently? Like what, what tactics did you kind of take to make that happen? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, when I started the content creation now, I, I've had my YouTube channel since like 2007, but it was never as a creator or as like, you know, to put out content or anything like that. It was like the odd video here or there. If it was a live performance from back in the day, then put, put that up sort of thing. Um, so when I decided to start content creation, I already had, I think it was a thousand subscribers or maybe 1200 subscribers or something like that. So one of the metrics obviously to get monetized is you need a thousand subscribers, but you need 4,000 hours of watch time. Right. And that I was like, not even close because like I haven't posted anything in years. It was basically near zero because it has to be within the year if I'm not mistaken. So I was lucky to have those thousand subscribers. Um, and now I just had to try to focus on the watch time. But ever since starting the content creation, it's just been giving myself like one goal at a time to chase. Right. So the, the first goal was to get monetized. Um, so, I, you know, that's also where you just uh, get creative with uh, what makes people watch, what entertains people, what, you know, what makes people click away. And it, you kind of like watch your metrics and your analytics and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't really like make videos for the algorithm. I don't really like doing that. Um, but if if I'm putting out a lesson video and, and it, it, uh, what could be 25 minutes long could actually only be seven minutes long and all the information's there, then like do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and then yeah, within those seven months, I was able to to get to that uh, watch time, which was nice. But actually, big thanks to the DJ Khaled video because that one really took off. Even though it's such a short video, it's like thirty five seconds or something like that. Uh, oh, jeez! It, it, it added up to a, a lot of watch time because of how many views it got. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, sorry, it's just saying here that I only have remaining meeting times nine minutes. Because I'm not uh, upgrade to pro, I'm kind of worried that it's going to end. Um, but uh, that's it. I think I shouldn't shouldn't just end, will it? Maybe it will. Hope not. Anyways, uh, if, okay. Um, if we have to restart, or even if uh, um, if I, but I, you're doing a separate screen record. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing separate screen record. So that's not the issue. I just think it'll uh, it'll kick us out of the meeting which i, I if, obviously if it want. does though like i could even send you an invite if, yeah if that's okay. easier. Let's, yeah let's do that that's great um because yeah i have a couple more questions for you i feel like this actually i normally have a question list and i go through them but i feel like i'm able to just talk to you pretty uh openly because i think we're kind of like here's the thing you're at a different level of guitar than i am completely so it's like i my content creation is different than yours in that sense right where because i'm not I'm trying, I can't really post things of myself because I'm not at that. I would say I'm not at that level. Cause obviously, you know, there's people at different, all different levels, but my, I yeah. can't be posting a Sultans of shred. You know what I mean? Like that's not uh, <laughs> something I'd be able to do. Um, I've thought about posting my like Lindsay Buckingham covers. Cause you know, those are, those are something I'm really proud of. Um, yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out how to attack that because I want to interview Lindsay Buckingham for the channel. Like honestly, oh, they might, if I'm able to get him on the channel, like my life is set. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> that'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah. So I was think I had this idea for. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna go on a little ramble spree here. Um, but I had this idea yeah. for these shorts because I've seen them now on um, Instagram quite a bit and TikTok where it's like, oh, this is day one of something. This is day two of doing this. So I, I had this idea like, this is day one of posting a Lindsey Buckingham riff till he agrees to do an interview with. Him, you know? <laughs> totally. 
And so I have about I have eight so eight of his songs down packed. So like I could I have eight days, eight videos, and like maybe I'll get his attention within those eight days. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> does it, do you know if he has social media? Like, does he have accounts that you could tag and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So he has Twitter. He has Instagram. He has Facebook. Um, and I so I reached out to him via email. I found his like uh, business email. Nice. I didn't get didn't get a response back, which is okay. You know, I'm I'm used to. I've done a lot of uh, cold emailing to different people. You know, I was like fortunate yeah. enough. You said yes to uh, to say yes. You know what I mean? So like, here we are. I, I'm a huge so. believer in that, and uh, I, that's always a huge suggestion of mine. Is like, you know, I'd love to be endorsed by so and so, or work like just just contact them. You know, like worst case they say no, or worst case you don't hear back, or something like that. But um, yeah, worst absolutely. case Ontario. Yeah, you wouldn't hear from them. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> So yeah, I guess that would be a good question to ask for you is, um, have you ever, like, you've worked out, you've worked with a couple different, uh, or at least one company with, uh, on YouTube, I know you were, it was something with a guitar giveaway. So like, how did you go about getting yeah. like that type of deal? Were you the one who reached out to them or did they reach out to you? No, that's all through uh, TikTok at the time. Uh, anything, as soon as a video starts taking off, uh, I have my email and my TikTok bio and, uh, as soon as anything takes off, you're starting to get, Hey, you know, we, we, you know, would you like to promote or would you like to use And And, um, with the guitars, uh, I always, because like I, ever since starting the content stuff, like I, I wanted to be a community of like guitar enthusiasts, people who like the guitar, play the guitar. Like just if, if you enjoy guitar of any kind, then it's just kind of like a community to celebrate guitar. Right. So, um, if it is like, say, you know, check out our beginner friendly guitars or something like that. Like they are great guitars, but I'm like, let's do, let's do a giveaway. Let's like, you know, I, I would rather make it something special for someone else, if that makes sense. Right. Um, uh, and, and just like, it, it's a fun way to kind of give back. Cause I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I, I'm fortunate to not like need that guitar or something like that. So it's like, Hey, let's give it away. Right. And then, uh, and then I, uh, you know, th yeah, so it's quite a few of them have happened in all different, we've done deals and giveaways with all different brands and stuff like that. It's been, uh, uh pretty cool. It's, it, it, it's, uh, I'm very, you know, fortunate to have those opportunities. Yeah. The, so the only one that I reached out to, uh, the only one, yeah, the only one I've reached out to is Kiesel because uh, I absolutely love their guitars, and I had bought the Jason Becker guitar behind me there, and um, absolutely love it. And so, si since uh, you know I love their guitars, I reached out to them asking, like, would you want to work together? And they were pretty excited, and uh, and we I've signed on as an artist with them and stuff, which is pretty exciting, but. That, that's the only one where I actually reached out to them because uh, uh, if it were up to me, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't play any other guitar. You know what I mean? Like I just, I love their stuff so much. Okay. That's interesting. That's cool. Man. It's, you know, two years in and you have a couple of these deals already rolling. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty wild. Like, yeah. I just think two years ago, if you hadn't started this, but you know, at the same time, you know, you put yeah. all the effort, you've put the effort in, you put the time in, uh, you've kind of built that connection with your audience through like, like I've done a lot of research on the social media thing. It seems like that's the way to go. Is you have to be building this connection with your audience through your own personality. You have to be like genuine and all that stuff. And um, yeah. that's something I think is probably one of the biggest challenges, right? Is like trying to break that barrier when you first post your video. You're like, oh my God, like all these people are going to see it. It's like, no, no one's going to see it. And then like, so, <laughs> no one's going to care either way. You know what I mean? Like you're like, I was like oh, what about these, what happens if this person sees it? It's like, who, who really cares, right? Like I'm doing this yeah. for me and to build out my own platform to then you know benefit my family in the future so 100 percent. i still have a lot of those ideas sometimes where it's like am i supposed to be doing this or should i be doing this or like because like i'm obviously way more um uh experienced at playing the guitar than i am like editing videos like that's something that i've had to kind of learn in the last two years i have done all of the editing myself but i'm thinking like do, you know should i hire a video editor like is this where i start to expand and stuff and then i'll see some youtuber with like 10 million subscribers being like yeah i do all the videos myself so it's just like you just have to find what works for you and you know it, it like spend the time doing what you enjoy doing right you can always kind of 
outsource different things and stuff like that. But um, it, it's really important to just do things like your own way because that's also what sets you apart, right? Where if I if I tried to be exactly like Rick the Auto, then like why would anyone watch me if they could just go watch Rick the Auto? Like it's just <laughs> he does right. that extremely well. Uh, I need to do something different. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Um, I think for your like for you, you teach a lot of you, you teach a lot of lessons, and then you're also editing. You're editing all your own videos, making your own thumbnails, mm -hmm. and all that. Like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. So it I is. do. Have you looked into the uh, like? I guess delegating out the or subcontracting subcontracting out the video editing, and like, did you see if it was like, is it worth the cost? Would you say? Yeah, it's it's. It's really tough because, um, and this is this is kind of what I've been dealing with in the last couple of months is trying to figure out some of this kind of stuff. Because um, obviously, if you for, first of all, I would preface this by saying on YouTube ad revenue is not nearly as much as people think it is. Right. So if I post a video, I have one video that did well on YouTube recently, where I'm sharing a story. And it's got over a hundred thousand views, and it's pr Canadian. It's probably made five hundred bucks, maybe like four to five hundred dollars for a hundred thousand views of a full length video, right? So, if I were to hire someone to edit that video, it would, you know, it it would either eat away most of that money, or maybe even more than that video made. And not every video is getting a hundred thousand views, right? So it, it's financially a tough decision, but also I just like, uh, having the control and, and being able to edit it the way I, and I like to do it. I also like doing things really quick. So I'll, I'll edit a video, you know, that day or within 24 hours or something like that. And I don't really want to wait a week to get it back and revise it and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like I'd rather just. If I film something, I'm excited about it. I want to upload it like today or tomorrow because <laughs> <Right. laughs> I just want to share it, you know? <laughs> 100%. Yeah, especially if you have a certain way of editing and you like it that way. That, you know, before this, I was trying to do some e-commerce stuff and um, mm -hmm. it, it was doing well. And then I just, I didn't like holding stock and like, it was a lot of financial like commitments up front. And, mm -hmm. It's just not ideal. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. like this content creation stuff. I love playing guitar. I love hearing, listening to other people play guitar. And I just, you know, I don't know. I think it's the way to go. It might take longer to make some money. Because, I, I, to be honest, like, to this point, I still haven't made any money. But I have my first deal coming up on Friday, which I'm super stoked about. Um, nice. You know, so I've, I've made, I'll finally have, like... Is it a brand honest. deal? Uh, it's with a, um, um, like, a, what the, like, it's with a band. Like, it's a, a band has, like... Uh, hired hired me or whatever like i'm gonna post some, uh, one of their like songs on my like, cool. reel on my channel so it's like because i do these like bobblehead reacts like when i see a solo i've done a lot of lindsey buckingham ones where i'm just like oh have you heard this song you know and it's just like yeah. has the the real playing so i'm kind of like not i'm stealing content i am but i just more just to get it out to my followers like you got to hear this solo you know well i was gonna uh, ask that if you've done like reaction videos for either youtube or tiktok or instagram and stuff like that because uh that, you know, that's not something that uh, seasonally would affect you, right? And uh, right. Uh, it's so a, yeah, those, uh, that's the one that's done yeah. well for that. Those have done well for me. Like, I had one that did like four million on Instagram, and I was like, "What crazy?" Um, and it was just some guy like he was chugging a beer while playing a solo, and uh, his name's <laughs> Chili Dog. He's from Nashville, anyways. Um, so the lady who is from the marketing agency from that band, who like looks over that band, reached out to me, and they were interested in using my my platform for their new release which awesome. is coming out on, on Friday. So you have to do deal with that, make a little, little money finally after, you know, a lot of, a lot of pushing yeah. and I'm excited for the future, you know, like gives me a little more motivation. So. Yeah. And, um, on Instagram, you have uh, a really good following, right? I forget the, the number, but. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to like, I, I'm very happy with the amount. Yeah. It's 35,000. Like it's a, like, I was, that's big. I'm that's proud. huge. Yeah. I'm very proud of like that. Yeah. And, and on TikTok, you have a lot, right? Yeah, I hit a hundred, I'm at 104,000, I think. That's, on that's really big. So um, there is like tremendous value in that, right? So it's um, brands 
companies like that they would love especially let's say it's like guitar related that's that's also uh from like a business standpoint it's it's really good to have like a niche like guitar where every everything's guitar because then if they if there's a company that is selling a guitar it's like every follower follower of yours is guitar enthusiastic of some kind right so it's like it's such a targeted audience that they can reach and there's so much value in that from a business standpoint so um so yeah tiktok and tiktok uh i think a lot of companies are going there for brand deals almost before i i still don't get many of them through youtube even though the subscriber count is is getting you know pretty like pretty high but um i still get them through tiktok yeah it's funny that's interesting i'm not sure if it's because it's a smaller like a younger audience that's through tiktok that they they're targeting those people because then, heck, you know, hey, mom, dad, can I get this, you know, guitar, you know, yeah. something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know either. I think, I think YouTube is pretty saturated, right? Where it's like, uh, it's funny. I posted a, a, a skit short recently of when you take lessons from a YouTube guitar teacher in person, and in the in person lesson, he's trying to sell you products and he's trying to get you to subscribe, and it's like. You know, it's just so it's the ridiculousness of it. I actually had a few people comment thinking that that was a legit brand deal in that video. And I'm like, no, I'm making fun of. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. and do you, they're so like, do I you can't believe you of... monetized this video. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That was a question I had for you is like, how do, do you get it? I'm assuming you don't get that much, uh, hate, like hating, like hater comments. I don't know if you do, do you sometimes I, get them? So I'm, I'm fortunate that it's a pretty small percentage, right? I would say under 10%, let's say it's pretty small, right? But, but yeah, okay. But no matter what you post online, you're going to get it a hundred percent. That's why for me, like at, at, with my uh, subscriber base and my uh, community as of right now, I honestly can't imagine what Rick Beato gets and what the, all these other guys, because it's so much more multiplied than mine. Um, and the bigger you get, the more of that you get because people just like to, you know, uh, pick on the big channels sort of thing, right? But um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, uh, uh, on TikTok, when that first video went, viral it was a shred parody of hotel california right so it was like what if eddie van halen and steve by and all these guys played on hotel california so the the idea of that is already ridiculous like it's supposed right. to be over the top right um right. but you definitely get your fair share of like you, know, you ruined a classic or this sounds terrible or it's like i i almost like was lucky to like experience all that in that video so then from then on it's like eh, you know like <laughs> yeah. this this might just not be for you <laughs> right you some I mean? are, it's brutal though some people are just you know oh, some, yeah show up leaving like what kind of person just like tries to like spread negativity online like I've, you can't you can't trust that so people. many times where yeah. i've seen so many videos online that i'm not a fan of I have never once commented to let people know I don't like it. Not once. Yeah. So it's like, I don't really understand it and I don't want to understand it, but, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's almost like, uh, you almost kind of feel bad if that makes sense, where it's just like, if, the, if this is how you spend your day, then it's like, you know, you're probably having a crappy day. And I, I, I more feel bad at that point than like, take it personally but it's funny I, I got a comment one time um someone commented something like how much they hate guitar solos right but like and and some i did reply and i was just like you are on the wrong channel right now like this is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is not the place for you <laughs> yeah this is all guitar solo yeah jeez yeah. but again like that you can't you can't try to win that person over because you know, you do this and you do this like specifically well, you're, you're not just gonna, it's not gonna appeal to everybody, if that makes sense. But you definitely will find enough people who do like what you do, right? Right. Um, yeah, even you'd be so, I get, I get hate 
when I try to give away a free guitar. Like, there's just literally nothing you can do where, you know, uh, I had one giveaway that unfortunately was only, um, oh, I can't remember if it was only the States or only Canada. It's one of the two because it was the Canadian side of that company, right? It's, it's you know, it's not my decision, but they're so-and-so Canada and let's give it away in Canada. So I got, you know, uh, like, bunch of angry americans like uh <laughs> unsubscribing on you know it's like yeah. all right <laughs> yeah like what can you do right um, not sure what you want me to do here but <laughs> yeah 100 yeah i was like i was asking that question because this morning i got i woke up to like two hater comments on like my i posted a new reel and it was one of my do you play guitars out in public and i actually was from like last year it's one of my first ones i filmed and it was like at the end of my like cycle on the street i usually walk and since then, I've learned that like I tune, I tune every couple streets just to make sure it's like mm -hmm. still in tune. This time it wasn't. The guy strummed a couple chords and it was out of tune, and I was like, "Shit!" You know, like <laughs> I um, really wish it wasn't out of tune. Anyways, I didn't post the video, and then I wanted to post it, couldn't find it, and then I found it like literally last week. So I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna make the do you play guitar?" Like this guy took his time out of his day to, you know, play for the channel. I'm still gonna post yeah, the yeah. video. And uh, anyways, people were like, "Well, at least tune the guitar before you like." You play like such an amateur, like writing all this stuff, and I was like, man, like I you, I remember once I posted a video and like it was on Facebook, it popped off, it got over a million views, and like it was just nice. hater comment after hater comment. Yeah. I first posted yeah. a video of Herman Lee when he was, I don't know if you've seen it where he's does his like, he lifts the guitar, like whatever he does, yeah, and yeah, then it, and he, then it falls apart, like, yeah, like broke in half. I think he does it on purpose, anyways. Um. Or maybe he doesn't. And not not a good endorsement for his guitars. <laughs> exactly. And I just wrote, I I just done like a bobblehead. I was like, this is how you don't play guitar as like a joke, <laughs> right? Like this guy is like a god on guitar. Like I, you know, people are like you don't tell Herman Lee how to play guitar. And like <laughs> how dare you? And then I was like, I got like I actually got two personal messages. People were really like like giving me like crap for <laughs> posts. Anyways. I was mind blown at uh, the amount of hate out there because, like, like you said, you, when you see something you don't like, you just swipe past it and go to the next thing and carry on yeah. with your life. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, I don't respond to like uh, the the tough thing, the real tough thing as a creator uh, is that to a lot of those comments, you have a comeback right away that <laughs> you'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, but it's never worth it. It's just like. Again, that's not a person I'm trying to win over, and uh, it's not the type of energy I want to bring to my channel. If you notice on my channel, there's never any um, negative videos in the sense of like, I see other videos where it's like, you know, the most overrated guitar players or like, you know, uh, guitar players that suck or, you know, like just, and it's just a negative energy where guess what kind of comments you're going to get <laughs> if you're putting out that type of content, right? Um, and uh, I, I have one uh, short that is meant half as a joke. It's meant half as a joke of uh, um, who's the greatest rock guitar player of all time. And I'm like, is it Eddie Van Halen? And I show right, clips yeah. of Eddie. And then I come back and I go, yeah, it's, it's Eddie Van Halen. Now, it's meant as half a joke that obviously it's not definitive like that it's not like you can't really say that but also it's just me paying tribute to eddie because he's my favorite and i love the guy and so it's just like a little tribute to, to eddie van Halen, right but oh my god the comment section on that video just people take it so personally and they take it so seriously as well uh people ripping me apart why the hell should we listen to you what the hell do you know all this kind of stuff and it's just like and and again, at the end of the day, I'm okay taking that because I'm paying tribute to Eddie. That's really what matters here. But it just it makes me laugh when like did this, this did this video ruin your day? Because like, maybe take a break from the internet for today if this is pushing it over the edge. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hundred percent. I actually watched that video, your Eddie Van Halen video, this morning. I actually saw that this morning. I was laughing pretty hard. <laughs> it was good. But it's meant as like yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. A, a joke, I like. Right? I kind of like your. I like 
your style of delivery on your like your humor is very like like not I, i'd say it's somewhat dry you know you got like this dry satire it, kind yeah, of thing i, I appreciate that yeah yeah so that's pretty cool well uh to to your point where you said you uh left a, a funny comment i like doing that on tiktok i'll leave like you know what's meant to be sarcastic funny comments and um tim henson from polyphia posted a video a pov shot where you don't see him but you just see him looking at the guitar and he's playing one of his songs and i commented saying this is one of the best covers i've seen on youtube or on tiktok right duh, duh it's a joke right but you should see the replies of just like you idiot start a cover it's like yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> replying to my comment. Yeah, one hundred percent. And sometimes I feel like I leave comments like uh, like if someone comments something negative, like, oh, thanks for the comment, really helps with the al algorithm. You know, <laughs> something just like or yeah. like agree, I'll be like, oh, thank you so much. You know, <laughs> just to yeah. I learned to not like you said, I learned not to reply to the negative comments because they're just going to come back at you no matter what you say, and just you know tell you to go fly. They're in that mind you know? space where it's just. Yeah you know yeah it's just negativity <laughs> and you know you're not going to make your way through that clouded <laughs> uh judgment if that makes sense yeah and that, that's what right. i've learned yeah 100 percent. and why don't you have an instagram account i was curious about that it, it's a personal uh like you know uh idea or preference and stuff but uh, before getting into content creation. So I haven't been on Instagram for over two years now. Um, no longer than that. Maybe four or five years, I want to say. Um, I, I just didn't like it as a platform, to be completely honest. Um, I find my experience, uh, TikTok is more entertainment. People are trying to be funny. They're trying to sometimes be educational. But it's they're everyone's just trying to really entertain on there. Uh, YouTube is a lot more like educational or you know uh, community based like that, right? When I was on Instagram, it was very much the platform of like, hey, look how amazing my life is, you know, and everyone comparing each other to you know, oh, so and so's in Dubai this week, and here I am at work, and now it makes me feel crappy about my life, where it's like. Yeah, that, that's one picture that that person took like three years ago. And, you know what I mean? It's just like, it, yeah, I just found it the more toxic at the time, at least. Because, like, this is even before real, so I have no idea, like, how that all works and stuff like that. But I just, I found it was not a platform that I enjoyed having in my daily life, if that makes sense, right? And, um, you know, even with guitar, you see so much stuff online now, where it's so much it's all about the views and stuff like that so you see you see like fake videos you know sped up videos you see all this kind of stuff where it's like um I, and i'm not judging the people who do it but the problem is that now it's people are watching these videos just going for, you know you can't tell who's real or not if that makes sense like it's just it's more the standard now that like you know, half of it isn't actual playing, if that makes sense, right? So it's like, um, it, it's unfortunate. I get a lot of comments where it's sped up or it's fake, and it's never either of those, ever. <laughs> it's almost uh, like a compliment, Other than the right? DJ Khaled. That was the fake right. one. <laughs> yeah. And I do like your, your style of content because it's, even when you're doing, let's say, a cover, like, you know, like, they're not, it's not really a cover, you know, you're kind of, yeah. have your own creative twist to it, and you're still, like, banging out, like, an outrageous solo, but it's kind of like, it's not like, oh, here, like, listen to me play this exactly how it was played on the record, you know, you're like. Yeah. I, I'm a, a big believer in that, where I, I want to play the guitar the way I play the guitar, and so I always, if, if you took, uh, I don't know, uh, Comfortably Numb, by Pink Floyd, right? And you asked Eddie Van Halen to play it. He's going to sound like Eddie Van Halen. He's not going to sound like David Gilmore, right? And David Gilmore is going to sound like David Gilmore. And if he's trying to play Beat It, he's not going to sound like Eddie, right? That's what makes those guitar players like great is having your own sound, your own personality in the instrument, right? So, um, on 
if I was doing a live performance, if I was doing a gig, I would not care at all about trying to get it exact to the record. Uh, I would have my own fun with it. On social media, it does require you to probably be a little more precise or else people just like, you know, think you can't play it or rip you apart or, you know, uh, or, or they pick apart like the tiniest little details where it's like, you know, uh, I, I did a video where I was, and it, it wasn't the point of the video. I was actually a joke video, but it started off with me playing comfortably enough. And I was playing it on my Les Paul. And I got a comment saying like, you know, I'd never play that on a Les Paul again. Like that it's a Strat song. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I don't, <laughs> what do I care? <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh my God. Like, like we're really searching for stuff here. Like the, <laughs> right. <laughs> Never. So it's that. just like, yeah, like it, it, you know, first of all, you're going to get the negative comments no matter what, but it's just like, I, I don't know. I never even considered that when I was playing that, that it might be like the wrong guitar. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, uh, and I, I was still trying to play the solo pretty exact. So it's just like, meaning with social media, you kind of pay more attention to that than you would otherwise. Right. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I guess, do you have any like tips for someone who's trying to get into content creation, or someone who's already in it? You know, like myself as well. Like uh, that, you would say that you've learned along the way that would be pretty valuable. Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to pretty much learn every single day and trying to get a little bit better each time. That's the goal, at least. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but <laughs> uh, I think, as you said earlier, being genuine being yourself i think that's the number one thing because people like to feel like they're getting to know you through your content um i've never met uh again using riffy auto as an example i've never met him uh but you watch his videos kind of like knowing who he is and his personality and the way he is and stuff like that so you uh, you almost get acquainted with that person if that makes sense right so if you're trying to be too perfect or if you're trying to be too rehearsed or too like professional or something like that, not, not in an unprofessional way, but just like, um, it's really challenging to turn on a camera and talk to it. Like it's a person in the room, if that makes sense. Right. Like that's a big challenge, especially for new creators. Cause it really is just a lens looking at you. So it's, you know, if I'm doing a lesson, I'm, I'm almost trying to picture that a student's sitting there and I'm talking like I would to the student. I'm even making the same jokes that I would to the student, like that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then for the, the, uh, funny ones, I'm, I'm trying to just those, those, I try to get them in the first couple of takes so that it's like a, an actual honest reaction, like the way I would actually react if, if I was, in that conversation if that makes sense right um yeah have like a, nat yeah, so, a natural reaction to it that makes sense yeah yeah so it, it seems more genuine instead of like preparing it too much if that makes sense but i think that's the number one thing because there's so many creators unbelievable creators out there who um people tune in because it, it's them like the you know who they are and, and, the, and the way they are the things they like and dislike and, and you feel like you're getting to know that person where um let's let's just say in the world of guitar you don't have to be able to play the guitar like steve by to be a guitar creator if that makes sense right it's like there's so many incredible creators um that it's it's more just find what you enjoy with it and that enthusiasm I, I, there's a channel, and unfortunately I forget the guy's name, but he's a piano player and he posts a lot of great videos where he analyzes the music theory of songs, right? So that's a topic that you may not think would get mass appeal of breaking down, you know, a two, five, one and this progression and all that kind of stuff. But he uh, shares it with such enthusiasm that he's just so excited about these chords and why this works so well. And it just sounds like, listen to that chord. It just sounds so good. It's, and it, people are captivated by it because they're enjoying like his enthusiasm with they, half of them probably don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> if they've not yeah. gone to school for music and stuff. Right. Uh, but it's just the, you know, seeing the, 
emotion and the um, excitement that he's like sharing. Where if he was just sitting there in the camera saying, you know, here's the two chord and here's the five chord and resolves itself, it would be really boring. Even if you did go to school for music, it'd be boring. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Uh, So it's that excitement, right? And uh, that's why uh, if if you yourself did like reaction videos where you're like, you know, sharing some of the music that you love yourself, but like that you love so much, that that stuff does super well, like all the time, because it's more of the, they're connecting with it emotionally. And it's funny because I've I've watched some of those videos and it's like I want to see what someone else thinks of a song that I love. Does that make sense? Like, it's yeah. like, I want to see if they enjoy it. I want to see. It's just, a, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting type of content, but it, it really is appealing, right? Of, yeah. Like someone listening to Van Halen for the first time and reacting to what they're hearing. It's it, that, that in itself is really cool. Yeah, I've seen a couple. There's a one guy who does shorts like that. He's like first time listening to this song, and he's just like getting into it, and he's uh, really enjoying himself. Um, it's and, uh, it's fun content. Yeah, yeah. There's one guy. I don't know. He's pretty big on YouTube. His name's Michael Palmazano. Uh, mm-hmm. He does a lot of the. Yeah, he does a lot of those uh, React videos. And you know, I've learned about a lot of new guitar players I didn't was not aware about just through his content. Right, like uh, Kingfish. Exactly. I learned about Kingfish. I learned about Billy Strings through him. Nice. Um, not sure who else, but uh, that's another one I would want to get on the channel. Billy Strings, that guy's a, that guy's a, an absolute like assassin on the guitar. But, uh, Man, I, I'm sure you will, like, because uh, yeah, that, that that'd be amazing, especially as like, you know, that's that's what I was saying earlier, like leveraging that follower base. Like, you you have like the the leverage or the ammunition to now contact these people and say like, hey, I got such and such on this platform. Would you, you know, and, and again worst cases uh, uh they say no right um i uh i i, I saw last year that steve i was coming to toronto to do a, a gig and i reached out to his manager saying any chance he has some time in the day to collab on something right and they they got back to me and said no like he's not doing anything like that right now totally fine but even if the manager or Steve took two seconds to check out who I am. Like huge bonus. <laughs> 100%. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So it's like and the next time he comes, uh, you know, you could always yeah, reach maybe. out. Maybe like, oh, right. this guy's reaching out again. Like, hey, let's just let's just give him, you know, a half hour, you know, something like that. Because I thought it would be hilarious to do one of those student videos where I'm the teacher and the student walks in and Steve by <laughs> and I'm like I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. So, like, here's a G chord, you know, and I'm like yeah. showing him the basics, and it's like, or, or, and I, because I actually thought of it ahead of time. I thought it would be funny to be like, so if you took him, you know, like talk to him, like, you know, you don't even have the time for this student, even though it's Steve Vice sitting there, and you're like, have you taken lessons before, you know? And he's like, yeah, from a guy named Joe, you know, Joe Satriani. And yeah. Just like, well, here's here's the real way to do things, you know. It's just like that would be so <laughs> ridiculous, right? <laughs> right. Oh, what right. Were- that would do well like that would right. absolutely do well oh you that would blow up <laughs> like the, like 100% i think everyone would think that's hilarious um, what was the what were those videos with it was i remember seeing joe satriani's c vi i think even uh uvig von melstein whatever his name i sorry I don't know melstein, yeah it. yeah that guy can he can play man like outrageous to the speed and just like power in his playing um what were the huge influence on me oh yeah yeah oh the g3 the g3s that's what they're called um i've watched i think three or four of those and i've uh three three of them i watched three of them and they're they're outrageous man these guys just go 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 like i was uh fortunate when i was uh younger to go to the one with igfei because they have a dvd for that tour so i actually saw that tour when it came to toronto and um you know one of the craziest guitar experiences ever and that's my personal favorite one because joe and steve are like somewhat similar players right and then igbe is kind of you know quite different from them so you get like a bit of variety similar with when they had eric johnson you're getting a little bit of variety if it's just like three shredders then everyone's just trying to play faster than each other and it's just like too much for an hour and a half but that concert it, it's still one of my my favorites and uh, igve doesn't get enough credit for 
the amount of like passion and feel that he still plays with at that speed where like there's a lot of guitar players who can play that fast but it sounds very sterile and it sounds very like uh you know lacking emotion if that makes sense but igve has this like fiery personality that's coming through at that speed and it's just like i i still think he's one of the greatest players of all time yeah right. and one that's of the biggest influences too like for yourself he's a, yeah. i think for guitar in general like i think in the 80s in my personal opinion i think in the 80s the two biggest influences who like kind of you know influenced all the other players and trickle down and stuff for eddie and igve you know it's like those two were like after eddie everyone was just trying to copy eddie and then after igve came out everyone was just trying to copy igve <laughs> right. like those were like the two guys who had the the biggest influence on other players i would say yeah that's interesting yeah i, I learned about uh, igve a couple of years ago like i said uh, my buddy from uh the uk he kind of showed me the g3s he told me to yeah. watch them and that's when i was introduced to him and like this guy he has like uh igve has like all this jewelry on and he's still like <laughs> I was like, man, I feel like even like having a ring on sometimes, like, oh man, I could take this off, you know, like, so. <laughs> this is a bit much. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a funny story for you meeting, meeting, uh, Igwe Malmsteen. So this is going back years, like over 10 years ago. And I was invited to NAM, right out in California, the big convention. And the company that brought me to NAM to be, to perform and to showcase products and stuff like that also brought Igve. I didn't know this ahead of time. So I'm in this little like, you know, backstage area that's like catered where the artists can hang out and just like, you know, warm up it to go perform. This is totally true. <laughs> and, uh, the, the head of the company like taps me on the shoulder and was like, Jamie, I want to introduce you to someone. And I turn around and it's Igwe Malmsteen. And he's standing there with two bodyguards at NAM. Like it's all musicians. And it he's standing there with two huge bodyguards. And I'm like, oh my God. And and so I said to him, like, uh I was like, you're a huge influence on me. I love your playing. Like, you know, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. And and, and uh he shook my hand and stuff. And then kind of stupidly on my part, <laughs> knowing Igwe's personality uh i was about to perform so i said to him hey i'm i'm about to perform downstairs in like two minutes you should come check it out right and igve just laughed at me like as if i'm gonna watch you play the guitar i'm igve malmsteen right it just like <laughs> straight up laughed like anyone else it would have been like a courtesy of like hey maybe maybe if i'm down there i'll check it out or good luck or like you know he just <laughs> looked at me and laughed like yeah, okay. I'm going to listen to you play the guitar. So here's the funny part of that, though, is that in no way, not even for a second, was I offended by this. It was just like, oh, my God, that is the most Igve response I could have gotten. <laughs> <laughs> Why awesome. did I even think he would be interested? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, like, a couple minutes later, Igve goes and performs at a booth and just destroys and just like it's like you know everyone in the whole place is stopping and, and watching him play because he's like one of the greatest ever but it's just i i i like cherish that story just because now i have my own igve moment where like it's like it was just it was too perfect <laughs> well that's pretty cool that uh you bet i'm like 100 percent. so you had i guess you were pretty uh like involved in the the scene beforehand in terms of like playing live shows if you're getting invited yeah. to like conventions and stuff talk to me maybe talk to me a little bit about that yeah i started uh performing live like in my teens and then uh in my early 20s like that's you know i was teaching but i was also like performing professionally you know for a living and stuff and and session work and um you know all that kind of stuff uh Unfortunately, it got to a point, and maybe it was just the projects I was working on, but unfortunately, it did get to a point where, you know, the gigging and the performing, since I was being hired for other people's music, other people's stuff, it did feel like a job at a certain point where it was, you know, it, it was like, ah, oh, I got a gig this weekend. I can't hang out with friends or family. Like, I, you know, it's, I got a job, right? And, uh, and then that, when it started to kind of feel that way, I was like, okay, maybe I should you know, step away from this and take a break. I continued teaching 
all the way through because I just love it and really enjoy it. Um, I love teaching students from like the very first lesson ever to more advanced students. It's just like, it's so much fun to be a part of that process with someone. Right. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I was lucky to do all that back then. And then, um, the content stuff was kind of like a new performance arena, if that makes sense. Like it's a new way to share. It's a new uh, way to reach an audience. And, you know, like yourself having over a hundred thousand followers on TikTok, like it would be insanely hard to get a hundred thousand people any other way <laughs> to follow what you're doing. Like yeah. you'd have to be touring, you know, the world for uh, a couple of years straight, maybe if you got lucky to get that kind of following base. Right. So it's just, you can reach an audience and, uh, you know, I was going to say better, but just easier way where, uh, yeah. And, and then the way I'm approaching it now is like the, the more I can build up that base, then when I do go back to doing a live show or, you know, doing clinics or, you know, then you have this space that you can bring out and promote and you're not doing it the other way around where you're trying to like tour to get YouTube subscribers, if that makes sense. Right. It's like incredibly hard to do. Yeah. You so. almost, if you're on tour, you'd have to be like filming your on tour of life and uploading it to be getting those, those followers. And, right. And to be honest, you probably get more value from the tour doing that <laughs> yeah. than you are, you, you know, it's, yeah. it's amazing with bands and artists where, they'll go on a tour for four weeks or something. And it's like, Oh, the tour was successful because we only lost $2,000. You know, it's like, it, it, and, and that is a su successful tour. It's, it's incredibly hard to be in that life. I, right. I got asked, this is going back when I was 18 or so. I got asked to join a, a fairly established metal band that was also from Toronto. But they were signed to a label. They were touring North America. They were playing festivals in Europe, right? So fairly established. And I was very interested because I loved their music. And then when it got time to talk to, you know, about finances and stuff like that, I was pretty shocked because I said, like, you know, so, you know, what are you pulling in, you know, on tour and stuff like that? And I remember the other member going, yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Like, you know, we usually each get about a thousand a month. Right. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, you know, yeah. you can't live off that. Right. So it's just, and, and yeah. it just showed like this band's already really established. So it was just like, it's like, oh, maybe this isn't, you know, the, the ticket to the, the life that you think it is. If that makes sense. It's still, sleeping in the van it's still you know what i mean like it's it's a tough life 100 percent. and i think uh there's this guy i watch on youtube his name's dan co i don't know if you've heard of him he's he's, he's just kind of so. coming up now so he's he talks a lot about like the digital economy you know which is like content mm -hmm. creation and how you can use your platform to then you know funnel your those, your followers into some sort of sale at some point yeah. right which ideally at the end of the day that's what we want as a content creator and for yourself you have your patreon page where like ideally you would get as many people learning guitar from your patreon page over someone else's on youtube right um I th right yeah i think yeah like i know like for me like i like making content but at the end of the day like i am building this platform up so at some point i can have like a better life for my family you know like it's 100 percent. it's not just for fun right like yeah or, or just to be able to do this, you know, as a job, right. To be able to right. do it full time and stuff like that. Um, you have to get it to that point or else you just, it, you can't really do it. Right. So it's, um, like, yeah. it, 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 it's a fine line between like figuring out how to, you know, make some money while doing it, but also not have that as the main goal for all content, if that makes sense. So like, um, for, for me, if I post a cover, if I did, you know, Tornado of Souls recently, or uh, what was the one I did uh, very recently? I did a Guthrie Govan solo last week. Um, so I won't see a penny from either of those videos because it's copyright material. It's not my music, it's, even though it's a cover, right? Um, so if I was financially motivated 
first, then I would never do those videos, right? But those videos are great ways to reach an audience and to showcase skill and, you know, and to entertain and stuff like that, right? So it's like, it's a, it's a tough balance to find, but obviously right. you have to make some money while you're doing it as well. Yeah. Right. Of course, yeah, you need like for all the time you're putting in, you want some sort of financial compensation at some point. But I see what you're saying because, yeah, yeah. a lot of the videos you're just posting to engage your following. And then, you know, every couple of mm -hmm. videos you can have that offer. Be like, oh, yeah, check out my Patreon page if you're, you know, yeah. something, something like that. Um, I, I've set it up in a way that works well for me where that's part of the reason I still teach as much as I do is because that's really like, you know, what we live off of. That's really like the income, the day job, right? Um, YouTube is monetized and makes a little bit of money each month, but it's not money that I like rely on or, you know, need to pay the bills sort of thing. And again, from a very fortunate standpoint. Um, so then I can just make the videos I want to make. I, I also don't have to like make sure I make another video by the month end or else like I don't have money like, sort of thing, right? Um, but Patreon is another student suggestion student was saying hey you should create a patreon page and again took completely naively i was like well how many people would sign up for a patreon page and then i checked out some uh, popular guitar creators and i was like blown away by how many paid followers they had right now it's interesting though just my perspective so far because the patreon is less than a year now uh that it's been active and as soon as people are paying money where it's six dollars american a month on my page um you know that i feel the pressure to provide value that i, I do want those people getting far more than six dollars a month in value and it's not just uh you know hey support me and help me out sort of thing but it's like i i try to post a weekly lesson video and i try to uh, always reply to comments and messages and it's like more of a an exclusive community where you like have direct access to me but if, if you go hey i'm working on this on guitar and i don't know how to do it right now like next week's lesson video i'll go over a whole video of how to you know i would do this like that kind of stuff right um but patreon what's interesting is uh that's where like really all the potential growth is uh financially speaking because if i'm putting out a weekly lesson video uh it doesn't really require more of my time whether it has a hundred followers or a thousand followers does that make sense like it's yeah, yeah. it's the same thing right where with teaching lessons i only have so much time in a day and i can't uh teach infinite students right right yeah you're selling um, actual time for money whereas yeah, exactly P patreon it's yeah it's exactly amplified. And the, the crazy thing though is on Patreon, I think I'm at about 260 subscribers now. Um, and so on YouTube, it's like 190,000 subscribers and Patreon 260 people and Patreon makes much more than YouTube each month already, which is pretty wild. And, and, and I, I say that just to like share. I get comments sometimes like, well, why do you charge for Patreon if you make ad revenue? It's like, well, it's, you know, not as much as you may think, but also like on Patreon, it's, uh, let, let's say I do a, a Sultans of Shred, right? And then on Patreon, I'll post the tabs for that. I guarantee the tabs take longer to produce than the video because <laughs> right. now I have to go through it every note of what did I do and how did I do that? And like, it's it's uh, a lot of work to actually provide that right so then it's like well it's also for the time to uh create that extra stuff or backing tracks and you know like all that kind of exclusive stuff yeah no and i think it's a great idea um that you have this patreon page and like 260 people at six dollars us a month reoccurring income like that's awesome and it's like uh, from a business standpoint, that's what you want you know and that's i don't know i guess you probably as much as you're a guitar player, guitar teacher, all that stuff, it seems like you have, uh, I've watched, I was watching a video where you're talking about setting like concrete goals and, mm -hmm. um, and those different things. So it seems like you, you know, you, you're pretty well, uh, versed in on the business side of things too. And yeah. there's certain books you're reading. Like I, I read like 
when you were talking, it kind of gave me this feel like I've recently read Atomic Habits and Think and Grow Rich. And I feel like in those books, it was talking a lot about those things. So I don't know if you were reading books or what your the type of research you're doing to get yourself like, like, you know, on the business side of things. Like, Yeah, that's, to, that's funny you say that. So I, I've never gone to school for business, but um, I, I've always been fascinated with business and love business and stuff like that. So I got very heavy into the world of investing um, and, you know, uh, Warren Buffett and, you know, all these guys. And then I read everything that they've written. So the business side of it interests me like just as much as like the creative side. And um, I think the business side of it can be just as creative, uh, how you market yourself or how you market a product or how you promote a Patreon page or something like you can do that creatively, if that makes sense and not, um, you know, a sterile way. Uh, it, interesting example with that is on uh, YouTube and TikTok, I've never ever posted a video promoting lessons. I've never ever once said, hey, I'm uh, doing lessons now, feel free to reach out to me, blah, blah, blah. I posted one short early on making a joke of the average guitar lesson. And then the caption was lessons with me aren't, or lessons aren't like this with me or something like that. Right. And that that's it. And like, I, that's really provided me my whole online student base. It's actually kind of almost funny, like how that worked right where they just from that video they saw like oh he he gets the 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 problem with the average lesson right and and then also can play and can teach and all that kind of stuff but it's just like that that basically was like uh a marketing video in, in a sense right not Instead not of pain, uh, yeah. as the primary intention but it worked that way right Right, and you were able to gather a bunch of students like that. Like I was talking to someone recently who was spending money on Facebook, uh, Reven, uh, Facebook AdSense, up to mm -hmm. because he's a drum teacher, um, and he was saying that he, you know, he posted this ad, might have cost him three hundred bucks or something, and he's like, well, even if I get one student from that, you know, but I think right. going the content creation route where it's free, it's just I'm technically time, getting right? paid for the ad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the yeah. video makes some money in addition to the business that it brings in, right? Yeah, um, 100%. I had a brand deal with a brand that uh, reached out to me on TikTok saying, we're trying to promote our product. Like, would you be interested? And um, they kind of came to me with the idea that they wanted, which... Um, uh, you know, hopefully this comes across right, but uh, as a content creator, you have to develop the skill to create engaging content, right? Marketing teams at companies don't always know how to do that, right? So they sometimes have ideas where you know as a video that's going to bomb, like it's not going to get any views, right? And, and I mean this in a nice way. So I, I said, you know, I will do that video, but I don't think it will do well. I have an idea that's, you know, less direct of an ad, but it's funny and it promotes the product. And they said, well, they were really generous and they said, we'll pay you for both, but let's see how they do in comparison. Right. And the, and I obviously put as much effort into the first one as I could to make it as good as possible, but it, it didn't do very well on TikTok. It got a couple thousand views. Right. And the other one has over 2 million views, right? And it's just, and you don't even realize it's an ad, right? Like it, it just right. happens to show a product I'm using in this funny idea. And then half the comments are like asking about that product, right? And right. It's like, that's really what you're after is you're after people showing interest in your product, right? So it's, uh, Again, the the business side of it is like it can be just as creative, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's fair, man. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that actually, I'm, and that's what I'm kind of struggling with right now. Is you know I'm still building up my following, and I'm, I've told myself three years it's going to take me time to, before I can get like some sort of um, like a like a serious monetization mm -hmm. to this. Um, you know, but I I don't know if I'd be able to go down the Patreon route. Uh, I've this is why I, I was. 
I've actually quite enjoyed talking to you because it's interesting because you're a guitar content creator, right? And you're also yes. doing lessons. So um, it's kind of in the exact same realm I'm in. And I'm very interested in the content side and how like content can reach so many people and how it can like kind of change your life in a sense. And like even for yourself, it's changed this you and done something that you never expected could have happened, right? And uh, absolutely. Just, nor normally I have all these questions set up for the, the interviews and I have to go through them. But like with you, I'm just like, oh, I have all these actual natural questions. Um, as someone who's sort of kind of on the same route as you, but I guess it's, I guess we're on the same route, but I, I'm not because you're not like at the same level of guitar as you. So I keep like, I'm like, I just want to make that clear. I don't think I'm <laughs> like a savage guitar player. You know what I mean? No. Well, <laughs> first of all, I would never describe myself that way either, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> you, there's, there's so many great channels with guitar where they're talking about gear uh, and, and I would be the worst gear content creator because my setup is always as simple as can be and I, I couldn't tell you the different tubes and different amps i couldn't i have no idea so it's like uh, that's you know i just kind of I, I try to use what what it is that i do fairly well if that makes sense right um, but it's it's kind of fun like finding that for everybody right and having a different uh niche i guess but just like uh yeah, but I, I don't think, I definitely don't think you need to be, like, just anybody needs to be some crazy guitar player to have guitar content. It's like, they're kind of two separate things, if, in my view. I think so, too. And I think there's something, so for me, I found, like, I feel like I found this little bit of, like, a, a hack with the niche where it's like, I'm I'm filming someone else play guitar. So it's like, it takes, cause I feel like if you put on the camera and you're just like, listen, you play this solo, it people aren't going to want to watch it, but you're like, listen to this person play a solo. But then you're as well, I find it's interesting because you've done this sort of kind of like, I don't know, some sort of hack where it's like people aren't, it's not, you're not just like, oh, listen to me play this solo. It's like, oh, if this person were to play this solo, it would sound like this. You know, like you're kind of taking, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but you're somehow like. So those those just... specific ones, the Sultans of Shred uh, are fun because since I am, mimicking what other players do in a parody then it's um if i just shredded over songs of swing people would be like what are you doing you're ruining it yeah it's too much like you know and and i would agree i'd 100 percent agree with that but so it's just yeah you, you're almost like bypassing that where it's like well you have to go over the top if it's like uh I don't know who, who was in that video, like Paul Gilbert or someone like that. It has to be shred because that's how we play, right? So it's like, um, it's kind of fun to, you almost get away with it a bit more than, uh, hey, listen to me shred this crazy solo result to swing. Yeah. I'm just getting ripped apart. <laughs> yeah. And you're also always, you're always, yeah, you're always adding that unique aspect where you're kind of taking away that part of, from yourself being like, oh, just listen to me play this. For some reason, I don't know, however you make your content clearly works because it's, people are enjoying it and it's, you well, are a badass guitar player. So I'm glad that's how it comes across to you. Yeah. 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 It's not, because like, it, it is like, tough. Like, I, I, part of my content, I do want to be, you know, since I've played professionally my whole life and everything, I do want to be taken seriously as a guitar player, like as a, as someone that can be hired for a track and can, perform sort of thing right so um it's tough to find that balance where it's like how do you kind of uh you know share your own music or share your own playing and not have it just seem like hey just you know pay attention to me for no reason if that makes sense like it's uh that's that's part of the big challenge is finding those like kind of fun creative ways to um showcase things without it seeming like I'm asking people to do me a favor and <laughs> uh, just listen to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. It makes sense. And I think, like you said, you, you're doing, or I, I, I said, you're doing a great job and I, I, you know, I'm impressed with the content you have. I guess I just, I got one more question for you. I don't want to hold you too long. I think we've gone over, you know, half hour over where we were supposed to I, be. But, uh, I, I've enjoyed it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, you have your, your Patreon, you have your YouTube AdSense. Um, and then I saw you have like, uh, merchandise as well. You got some hats and t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have any future plans right now? Like where you maybe like building out a course or like, have you looked into the course, like creation stuff or I've been asked about that a lot. Um, 
I right now I'm focused on Patreon um, because it's also, you know, an evolving thing where each week I'm doing something different. I'm interacting and stuff. Um, uh, maybe at some point I might do a course. Um, a course would almost be similar to a YouTube video in the difficulty that it's really hard to make a lesson video for YouTube that either is it's very challenging to make those videos on YouTube because you struggle to balance or I struggle to balance um, providing enough information that it's thorough, but it's not a 40 minute video and it's not too quick and not too, you know, engagement focused that it leaves people with more questions than answers. But also the big thing is a, as a teacher, everyone plays the guitar differently. Everyone, does things different. So as soon as I see a video where it's like, you have to hold your, your pick like this, you know, it's like, says who? <laughs> like <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone holds it differently. Everyone puts their thumb sometimes in different places. I have different technique than other guitar players. So with my students, it's always a tailored, like, you know, we're seeing what works for you and what doesn't work for you and kind of working around that. And it's really hard to make videos where it's like, you know, like, don't do this, but do this. Like, it, it's, um, it's it's hard for that to be an actual helpful video, if that makes sense. And I've noticed that even with my students, because so many students come to me saying, like, the, the number one thing you hear is, like, I'm worried about having bad habits. I'm worried about having bad technique. I'm worried I'm doing it wrong. And I think, of, honestly, a big part of that is just the videos on social media making people feel like everything they're doing is wrong. <laughs> 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 and... And the uh, <clears throat> the actual helpful advice that would make a pretty crappy video is just spend more time practicing. <laughs> right. But <laughs> like, do that. And, you know, these little things will work themselves out. And you, you look at someone like Marty Friedman who holds the pick all weird and you would never really tell anyone to hold it that way. But... Who am I going to, who am I to tell Marty Friedman that he's playing the guitar wrong? You know what I mean? It's like, clearly this, this works for you. So it's like, uh, it's hard making content that is, uh, and, and with a course, it would be similar. It would be like half of the course I would be saying, but feel free to do it your own way. Right. <laughs> and it would, <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be yeah, challenging. So trying to like, kind of like, yeah, because then it's too general of a, a course. You're trying to really di dive into the specifics. I, I appreciate that. That makes sense. And it's like clear clear that you're like focused on the the quality of what you're delivering over like the financial side of it. And it's funny because I feel yes. like the, the creators that focus on that are the ones who end up usually more financially successful because they've right. it just takes a little bit longer, I would say. But then the compounding effect, then you end up, you know, where you want it to be sort of thing. Which is very interesting. Yeah. It has to be genuine and it has to be, you know, honest and everything like that. Or else, uh, even, even like with content creation, like let's, let's say you're posting a YouTube video, like in, in its own way, that's kind of a product that you are wanting people to, uh, consume, right? Even though it's like a free thing and everything. But if they, if they don't feel like they can like trust you or that your intentions are not there or I'm, I'm only making this video, this lesson video, so that halfway through I can mention this ad that I'm being paid to mention, right? And it's like, the it just pushes people away, and then all of a sudden all those brand deals go away because no one's watching the videos. You know what I mean? So it's like it's a you have to first approach it to the to the audience, if if that makes sense. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, yeah, man, like that that makes a lot of sense. And uh, for your your t-shirts and stuff, what so are you? Is it a print on demand service you're using? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, uh, so yeah, I set it up through Shopify and then it's one of their apps or something like that, that you can download where I, I design, uh, some, some designs, you know, just some fun stuff and, uh, you can create basically digital mock-ups of what it looks like on a shirt and stuff like that. And then when people order it is printed and shipped so i i don't have any inventory i don't have any like it's just you pay like a yearly fee for the shopify account right yeah. and to be honest i uh you know i don't get a lot of um uh you know 
uh, business through that. But I also like it for the fact that if I want to get a hoodie with my logo, I can just get one made for me at a cheap price. Instead, most print on demand services, if you're only doing like one or two, they're, they're outrageously expensive to get even like a t-shirt be like a hundred dollars or something crazy. Right. So it's like, I can order a t-shirt through that for like 20 bucks and then have one for the videos to uh, be promoting with, if that makes sense. So it's, it's yeah, kind of cool yeah. for that reason. And do you, so is it gelato you use? Is that the one? It's a print fault. I think it's okay. called. Yeah. Yeah. I it's cool. It they have like so ago. many different products and you know, you can get any color, like uh, even t-shirts, they'll have like 30 different t-shirts you can choose from uh, different brands or kinds or, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought about, I thought about getting it. I have this idea. So I, I think in the next year I'm hoping to line it up is like do some sort of like band comedic band shirts. It's like a whole, whole mm-hmm. thing. Anyways, I'm not gonna, I don't, once it's out, it's out, but, um, I was looking at my biggest issue is like, I, I think I was, I was talking about this on the lessons with Marcel podcast. Um, I would rather charge, you know, 70 bucks for a t-shirt and then kind of rolling back to what you were saying with your audience, where it's like, if you're charging six USD for the Patreon, you want them to feel like they've gotten more than $6 USD yeah. out of their, their value. So for me, like if I'm going to charge $25 for a shirt or something and then they get it and they're like, Oh, it's kind of not like the quality they were expecting, I'd rather charge $70 and they get it and be like blow, like blow their socks off. Great shirt. Quality. Yeah. So I'm, that's where I'm trying to find, I've been like last year, I did some research on different companies and I'm still trying to figure out, I actually haven't looked into Printful at all. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go and check that out now. Cause I, that's something for me. It's like, if I'm going to do print on demand, I just want to make sure the quality is there from the audience. Cause it's, you know, just like with your content, yeah. you want that quality, you, no matter what you're my, doing. My experience has been great with them. Oh, yeah? okay. There was, uh, there was even one time and I couldn't believe this, but, um, uh, one of the shirts was being shipped from the States or something and, and it was DHL and a hundred percent DHL lost the package and, and it was printed. It was made. It was like, there was a tracking order and then it just never arrived. And the person reached out to me. So I contacted DHL and they literally were like, don't, you know, sorry, don't know what to tell you. It's just, like, we don't have it. Printful, even though they did their end of the bargain, they refunded the the price to the customer, which is really cool. Like really, they didn't technically have to do that. Right? So I I appreciate that, but I could not believe that the HL was just like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Like it's just yeah. it's like no, this is your responsibility right. <laughs> at this point. Like you it's know, almost as bad um, as uh, the Canada Post situation with your guitar. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, actually, we're doing another guitar giveaway this week. Um, we're in that video. I literally referenced that video where I'm like, we're not doing this again. Like we're not, <laughs> we're doing it right this time. <laughs> right. And, and my, my mistake with that was I thought it would, I thought it would be slightly cooler, just a little bit cooler. If the person, the guitar that the person's receiving was like the exact guitar that I was playing in the video, do you know what I mean? And it's like, maybe, you know, sign it for them or just like, just that exact guitar, but it made the logistics like way more challenging that way, instead of just shipping out a brand new guitar from the warehouse, which I've done in the past with other deals that were totally fine. So it's like, okay, we're going to okay. stick with that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from now sense. on. It was brutal. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, eh? Anyways, um, not, I won't hold you any, any, uh, any longer than this there but do you have anything you want to shout out uh, maybe your patreons different things things coming up for you um i mean everyone's always welcome to you know uh join the youtube channel or the tiktok page and uh you know patreon uh, if they're interested in the, the extra content or even just more direct contact with me then uh you can sign up for a free seven-day trial on the patreon page as well so it's a and it's a fun community because everyone in there is very supportive of each other. There's even a chat service where like I can post uh, a picture of a guitar and everyone's kind of chatting about it. And like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Right. And, and it, as it continues to grow, it's just even better, even more fun. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. 
All right, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. I think I'm going to reach out to you, see if you want to be on the Do You Play Guitar series in the next couple of months or something. Man, always keep in on. touch. Absolutely. Summertime or something like that. Like, uh, yeah. let's figure something out. But yeah, you let me know when you have Lindsey Buckingham on the on the podcast. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be the first to comment. That's for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's this year. Anyways, um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and all the information you gave. I feel like there's a lot of good insight for... Uh, other players who are looking to, you know, get into the content creation because it's anytime, man. Huge. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Anytime. All right. Thanks Jay, for having thanks. me. Yeah, of course. Okay, we'll talk. All right, soon. man. Have a good day. Okay. Yeah, you too. See ya. Yeah.